Hi, um, I'm Curtis, the developer of OVR Toolkit, and I'm going to give you a quick, quick tutorial on how to get started with it, and the things you're probably going to want to do. So to start off, looking at a wrist, we'll show the uh, time and date overlay, and this can be configured to also include the um, Spotify no playing, as well as uh, media controls. These controls just press the media keys on your keyboard, so they will work for like VLC, FUBAR, um, usually video players, usually uh, usually YouTube as well. So, uh, to toggle edit mode, this is what you'll want to use most of the time. Uh, this will allow you to edit windows uh, that you have visible around you. You can either click on toggle edit mode on your wrist, or just double press uh, either your grips on Vive and um, on Vive Rift or Windows Mixed Reality on the index. Double press both A buttons. So. You can't really see me doing it, but <laughs> but double press, so tap, tap. Uh, the startup tutorial should give you an idea of that anyway. So when you start it up, you should be on this home page. Um, you'll want to spawn a new window from here. To move them around, hold the grip, or on the index, it's sometimes easier to hold A instead. So place your hand near it, and the window will move around uh, with your hand. So just drop it. And now it's there. So you'll notice um, the first major thing that people are going to question. This looks very low frame rate. And if you're watching videos, it is. So the idea behind this is, say you're looking at Discord, for example. Uh, Discord doesn't really need high frame rate unless you're interacting with it, because you're just looking at messages. So this improves your performance in games. But if you're watching videos, you'll want to go into Window Settings, scroll down and disable eco mode. This will um, make it so that it stays high frame rate when you're not pointing at it, whereas with eco mode on it'll go down to 5 FPS. So just um, something to consider there. Uh, to attach windows to your hands so they move around with you, say for a Twitch chat, pick up the window and then drop it on the drop window here to attach icon. So splat. And now we can pick it up again and place it how we want. If you, one minute, let me just resize that. There we go. If you want the window to uh, disappear, you know how people do with Twitch chats. Under window settings, uh, hide window and not looking at window. And then that will make it, there you go. You can adjust this angle slider here and this will adjust what angle the window to the headset is at before um, uh, before it disappears and appears. In this case, it's 35 degrees, so somewhere around there. <laughs> it's more just something you'll want to mess around with and see what you think works best. You can also hide the windows based on distance instead, if you prefer. So you can have it, um, that's a bad example, at one meter, but... <laughs> Hold on. So you can have it... There you go. Some people prefer that if they have a window like positioned around their room somewhere and they only want it to appear when they walk over there. So options there for you for that. Um, oh, you can also attach the uh, window to different devices in this menu, including the headset. So if you wanted the window to, for example, move around with the head, there you go. Just be careful with this because you can place the window behind you and then you've lost it. <laughs> so. If you did that, for example, and no, you can't find the window, or you can't pick it up or anything, then you'll go into window list, and this will show the active windows you have open. Just click bring to me. There you go. And now you've got it back. <laughs> so you can, if you want to detach the window from your head or your hands or whatever, pick it up and drop it on the drop window here to detach. This usually appears somewhere below, like in the bottom half of your view. So there you go. And now this is in the world. I didn't explain very well before, but to resize windows, you can either go into the uh, window settings and just click larger or smaller to change the size. Or if you have it enabled in global settings, touchpad resizing, this is on by default. When you hold the window, you can press left and... Oh, I can't do it. <laughs> on the index, this is hard, so I, d I don't recommend this on the index, but on uh, the Vive, maybe, yeah. Uh, there you go, you can do left and right on the uh, trackpad. You can also do uh, touchpad moving, which is 
up and down to move the window further and closer. For the index, and to be honest for other headsets, I'd recommend using the grip resizing option. This will allow you to just hold both grips, or both A's as well on the index, and then just pull your hands apart and push them together. It will resize based on the uh, distance your hands have moved, so if I move my hands just a little bit, it's resizing slowly, but then if I move them a lot, it resizes quickly. So this is definitely the quickest way to resize windows, and uh, something totally worth looking into. Uh, another fun feature you might want to use is window recentering. So let's um, enable that in window settings here. And what this will do is when you close edit mode and reopen it, the window will move with you. So it can take a second to get this right. There you go. But um, now the window stays uh, in front of you. So this is useful, say, um, I don't know, just, just for most normal use cases. I normally have... Um, Spotify open as well, Spotify and uh, Discord, and then they move with me. Uh, the flickering is a Windows bug at the moment, <laughs> ignore that. <laughs> I'm hoping they fix that soon. But um, uh, So you can switch uh, presets down here. Uh, they should probably be called profiles. This is just how you can... Um, you can add infinite of these as well. These are just so you can have different saves. So in my case, I just have this one, and then I have the one that I'm working on now to uh, uh, to do this tutorial. So uh, this means that you can set them up individually for games. So, or say for example, you're a streamer, you could have uh, one of them having your um, your Twitch chat on your hand. You know, say this was a Twitch chat, and then um, look hiding. But then, you know, you're not always streaming, so you don't always want your Twitch chat. Then you can just go back to your uh, other layout whenever you want. Perfect. Alright, one final thing um, I think I missed off before is when changing through these uh, window lists, uh, sorry, through these um, presets, you can click a little lock icon down here. This will lock you from moving windows. So say I went to uh, this one, and... Um, I lock the window. Now I can't move this anymore. This is locked in place. Uh, if I unlock it, I can move it around. This is useful for um, those cases where you've, like this one here for me, where I've set it up and I never want to accidentally change it when I'm dragging something, for example. So definitely useful. The uh, shortcuts. This is something that a lot of people don't use because a lot of people don't realize it exists. And that is definitely my fault for not making it more obvious. <laughs> But um, that's what these are here. So if you're going to edit shortcuts and click add hotkey, this will um, add a, um, a shortcut or hotkey as they used to be called. So these are the applications that OVR Toolkit um, currently knows about. Anything under Windows is currently open. Anything under known applications is things that it's seen launched before and it's kept the icon for. You know, so you can create this as a... Um, uh, as a hotkey that will open the application instead, if it's not currently open. But um, you just add them, and then uh, I'm going to remove that one, because as I already have it. But these will... there you go. <laughs> and you can just switch quickly between the window that you're displaying. So and it definitely makes life a little bit easier. To close the windows you currently have open, you'll go into Window Settings, and just click close in the top right. If you don't have one open and you click a, um, a hotkey, it will just open one and attach it to the top of the menu, so it moves with um, around your menu. If you want to attach a window to this after moving it, just click the um, uh, drop it on the drop here to dock window uh, icon, and then it will sit on top of the menu. Even when resizing, it will um, should just stay there. Uh, a lot of people prefer this. This used to be the default place for windows, and uh, I don't know, it's quite nice. If you've already got the menu here, you might as well just use it. Uh, one thing to be aware of when interacting with Windows is that not all Windows are so friendly with touchscreen input. Discord, Spotify, Chrome, many other web browsers are very good examples of programs that work perfectly fine with it. Even Windows itself works perfectly fine with it. I, well, sorry, I would hope. <laughs> but um, uh, so you, you, you can do this way of scrolling by just holding the trigger down and scrolling up and down, or long pressing to right click. You know, like you would be long pressing, like 
like holding your finger on the um uh, on the screen essentially so but um the some programs aren't as friendly for this so that's what this use touchscreen input option is for so if you disable that now it's just acting like a normal mouse click so you need to enable maybe touchpad scrolling so that you can use your uh, touchpad to scroll up and down um because um it you, <laughs> there's not really another way to scroll otherwise because <laughs> you don't have the ability to drag and dragging uh these is not a fun experience so but um this is useful for applications that don't support touchscreen input i generally suggest keeping it enabled because it's a bit more user friendly but um you can do uh, i guess i don't have it bound right now but in the steam vr bindings you can bind a right click or middle click like dedicated buttons so you don't have to do because a long click won't work as this isn't um uh, using the touch input so if you want to be able to right click you'll need to bind that by default it's unbound because there's not really many controls on vr controllers and as ovr talk it's active whilst in games i don't want to you know you to be accidentally pressing middle click and right click and stuff for the majority of people that would never use it anyway so uh, the long click's definitely the best option there one feature that's missed by a lot of people is the night light so this is um down near the bottom of global settings this is very useful if, if you know, you're like me and uh, you're using VR until <laughs> hours of the morning. <laughs> so you, um, this will help reduce eye strain. It basically does the same as what um, uh, night lights on your phone or your computer does. Basically just making things kind of orangey colored, a bit less blue light, so in theory. But um, if I turn this up now, I usually keep it on about half. There you go. You can see this is now a bit more orangey. Uh, obviously not great for watching videos, but for things like Discord, Spotify, web browsers, this is generally fine. You get used to it pretty quickly and stop noticing it, like you have nightlight on phones and your PC. You know, at first you see it as really orange, but then you get used to it pretty fast. Well, I think this is um, enough of a crash course to get you started with using OVR Toolkit. If there's anything you think I've missed in this tutorial, let me know, and I'll, um, I'll create a newer version of it. <laughs> so... <laughs> This hopefully gives you a good idea on how to use the program for the most part, just enough that you can then figure the, st uh, the rest out yourself. Hopefully this covered all the uh, key basics, so uh, thanks for watching and enjoy your time using OVR Toolkit.